Hello and welcome back to the Lumen Weekly Q&A. Here we are on the couch with the old camera hooked up again. I don't even want to talk about it. The webcam is being super silly right now and it's working okay for the face cam stuff. As you may well be able to tell, the face cam is working quite nicely in the games, but to record vlog type videos with it is a whole nother story. I'm in the process of trying Adobe Audition out so I can record the sound or the audio on that and the video through the Logitech webcam software, but my lips have been really dry today. It's so wintry, it's like storming outside, raining all day, and then that's the weather. That is the weather that gets your lips. Move to South Africa and you'll know all about that. Anyway, it's actually really much worse up in Johannesburg because um, I, go, I go up to Johannesburg every now and then for little events and stuff. I haven't for a long time, but I've been up there on numerous occasions. And I took the plane up there and then we landed and then it like just hits you, it's like BAM! And then it like crackles up and then you've got these these little cracked earth lips. It's difficult to explain. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Okay, but your lips are just dry the second you get off the plane and the, the air touches your lips. It's done. It is done. But I'm actually not here to talk about dry lips. I'm here to talk about the questions that you guys sent me and the webcam that's not working and all the other stuff that's going on and what is possibly the worst backdrop I've ever had. I know I always say that, but this one is worse. Got a bottle here of Oasis, prepared still mineral water, got a glass, a mug, my screens, my mic and pop filter, that ugly red plug over there. Oh my goodness, this is record settingly low. Anyway, push those thoughts from your mind and try to ignore the bad lighting. I can sit back here and then it'll be okay. Or I can just turn my head up and talk to you guys like this. How would you like that? No, I don't think you'd like that at all. I wouldn't like that either because then I'd have to hold the phone up here. So. Nah, not gonna happen. And I'm not sure why I call this Lumen Weekly Q&A because I hardly managed to get it up weekly. I had some stuff that I wanted to actually get up before this, this week, or last week actually, technically. Let's not get technical right now. But I didn't manage to get it up because it required the cooperation of a certain someone. She who shall not be named. I'm not gonna, um, I, I wanted her to help me out with something, but it didn't happen because she has been super, super busy. By she, I mean Helene. And if I had to turn the camera around right now, then, well, you'd see a curtain. We actually installed a curtain over there. It's quite nice so that you can't see the junk in the kitchen. And there's a bunch of junk in the kitchen right now because she's been reorganizing and stuff. And it's, it's been pretty crazy. It's been pretty crazy. And for that reason, I've actually not recorded that many vlogs recently. I have just been so tired. I've been really, really tired, and I feel like vlogs specifically, they're the kind of stuff that I usually do to squeeze in between all the other stuff. When I'm really like, hey, I want to record a video right now, but I'm not in the mood to sit in front of my computer, or I'm out walking with Nero and I decide, like, you know, it's not too windy to record a vlog. I wouldn't mind talking about this, this, and this, and then I record it. But recently, I've just not had that. I've just not had that. Today, just for instance, as an example, I did, we, well, okay, let me just walk you through the day. We woke up, we didn't actually go to the gym today, which was really weird because it felt like I had a lot of free time, but at the same time, not. So we went to the shop quite early, got up, had breakfast. I didn't, I didn't shower before I went to the shop because for some reason, when you go to the shops in this town or in many of the towns, I'm sure, you come back smelling so bad that you want to shower again. That's how bad some of the shops are here that we had to go to. Just supermarkets, but that's how bad they are. Um, so we went to the shops, and that took a good hour and a half or something because Helene had to buy some stuff for the kitchen. She had to get... Basically, we had to look around. Then we had to go to a few grocery stores or supermarkets or whatever as well. That took some time. We got back. Then... Let me think what I... Oh, then I recorded... I think I recorded Skyrim. Okay, and... I started rendering that. Oh, first I fiddled to try and get the face cam, first face cam's frame right, which is top right for Skyrim, and I fiddled a bit with that to try and make it look good. To my, I wanted Skyrim's face cam to be very simplistic, the the look of the frame itself. So I think I got it right. Then I started rendering that. After that, I started working on the first Guild Wars news for the day, and 
that was fun. I am actually enjoying doing the guild, the, well, the news episodes, the news min episodes now because they show short. They they don't take that much of my time. I can collect the news quickly. I can um, plan them out quickly. I can record them pretty quickly. I render them quickly and I upload them quickly. And I can do some funny and interesting stuff with them because it's they're shorter and there's room for that kind of stuff. So I try to keep them under like three minutes or whatever. And uh, I did that. I did the Guild Wars news. It was something about the Beta Key giveaway from Curse and the soundtrack coming out. And then after that, sorry, I'll get to the questions now. Don't worry, they're right here. They're right here. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry. I haven't forgotten about the questions. I'm not turning this into an hour-long vlog. Although I could. I could do that. I've got a lot of things to talk about. It's all pent up inside. <laughs> so I, I was doing the, the Guild Wars news. Finished it. Done. Then I started uploading that, okay, and it, it uploaded pretty quickly, it was like 150 megs or something the episode, so that, that went reasonably quickly, an hour or two, and during that time I edited the last Minecraft episode, which actually also went up, I put the face cam in the right place, I rendered it, made sure it was good, uh, I have to actually check the rendered episodes afterwards to make sure there aren't any black spots in them, and uh, then... I got that news episode up, then when it's up, I actually have to do the annotations, I have to put the description in, I have to add it to the new Newsman show thing on YouTube, I have to put it in the right playlist. Uh, it sounds like a lot, because it is actually quite a lot. <laughs> I wanted to say it sounds more than it is, but it, it really is more than it sounds. It's, it's weird, then you have to do video responses, um, and the annotations actually take some time. Then, oh, and thumbnails and stuff like that as well. I love making thumbnails though. It's, it's actually one of the things I really take pride in doing. I don't know if any of you have actually, in the last couple of months, just typed youtube.com slash tales of lumen in and had a look at how nice the thumbnails look on the, the channel page. Oh man, they're so beautiful. I don't want to blow my own horn here or anything, but like, they're really cool. Did I botch that expression? Is it blow my own whistle? No, blow my own whistle doesn't make sense. I don't want to toot my own horn. Does that... I don't get it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I don't get these expressions very well. Um, I just make my own ones up as I go. So, I did that. Then, by the time that was done, I... What did I do after that then? I'm trying to actually think. Right, okay. Then I recorded Mass Effect, okay? Uh, Mass Effect doesn't have face cam. That goes quickly. It was about 30 minutes, I think, the episode. And when I was finished with that, I let it render. Then I took Nero for a walk. Then I came back. And the second I got back, the news episode had already been up. The Minecraft was busy uploading. Then I saw, ho, ho, ho. Silvari and Asura are going to be in the next beta week. And then I have to add, uh, make a new news episode for this. Okay, so I do this. I make the news episode, I set it up, and by this time it's like 3 or 4 o'clock already, or maybe, yeah, around then, and it takes me another hour or two to do the news episode, uh, rendering, all that stuff. Minecraft finally finishes, I put the annotations in there, put the thumbnail on there, um, get all that done, finally start uploading the next Guild Wars news episode, which also took a bit of time to make, because there's, when you actually edit an episode, and I'm going to make a video for this soon, I was actually thinking of making a tutorial type series, but I don't want to do a tutorial. I'm not good at teaching. What I want to just do is show what it all entails, and it's going to be a couple of videos, maybe two or three, that I'm going to talk about my limited knowledge with video editing, uh, with sort of equipment and stuff like that, which I have very little of. Okay, I've just got a mic, and that's about it. <laughs> really, that is about it. But stuff like the usage of fraps, Sony Vegas, I'm not so good with Adobe, but that kind of stuff. And along with this, just before this, the precursor to this, will be a video that's just going to be my go-to video when someone asks, do you have any advice for people who are starting out on YouTube? It's going to be a video that's going to talk about that in depth, uh, going to try cover everything I know about it, but I'm not sure when that's going to happen. So don't hold me to it just yet, but I'm going to do something like that because I've got a lot to say on that and a lot to say on how people 
that I see doing things run their channels and I'm not the kind of person that can really talk about this because I haven't had the best of success. I have seen people that have in a fraction of the time that I've been doing stuff on YouTube got a ton more subscribers than me, a ton more views than me, a lot more popularity or fame than me if you want to call it that. But uh, I still think that because I've been doing it for like two and a half years now I have a much better understanding about it than most of those people because I didn't get much help along the way. I had a few people that helped me out, but because of the long route that I took to get there, it took me a full year to get a thousand subscribers. And throughout that year, I was constantly improving everything I could. And now I'm busy talking about the stuff that I wanted to talk about in that video. So I'm stopping. I'm done. I'm done. I was talking about the day. So then I got that, I'm sorry. Sorry if I cut myself off there, but I can't do this now because I wanted to actually answer the question sometime soon. And uh, I'll put an annotation in the video somewhere that says question start at. Okay, so you can skip straight to that. Good. Good for me for remembering that. But then I, I got the second news episode up. I put it out there. I put the annotations on it, put the thumbnail on it, put the description in, put the tags in, put it in the right playlist, put it in the show list. All that stuff. Done. Finally. Then I decided I wanted to record the last bit of Quantum Conundrum. In all this time, I obviously still have to check email, I have to look at messages, and all that stuff. Then Quantum Conundrum, I... Oh, well, then, before that, I, we actually ate. I found some time to eat, and somewhere in there I had lunch as well. I don't even remember when that happened. <laughs> then Quantum Conundrum was another hour of recording. It might have actually been an hour and a half, because I finished the game, and I'm not sure how long it took. I was having fun, okay? Time flies when you're having fun. It really does. Except when you're trying to throw these safes where they need to go and they just don't go there and then you have to use anti-gravity to try and lift them up oh man that game I'm so bad at puzzle games I really am then somehow I managed to not do it in the way I'm supposed to do it I do it in some totally random out of this world silly way I managed to solve the puzzle and I just don't even know how but basically I record a quantum conundrum which I still need to put on rendering because I haven't even begun to think about that yet. The rendering on Quantum Conundrum, which is like an hour, takes about five or six hours because I rendered at 1080p at like 8 million bitrate because I want really good quality on that. I know on 1080p it's probably not necessary. I think I could probably get away with like five, but I feel that a lot of people actually watch it in HD and when you go above like six million or something, I think it's six million around there, then the improvements are so minimal but I always feel as if the gain is, is worth it and the video is going to be there forever and it's such a short series that I can just, I owe it to the series to do it in proper quality. But anyway, regardless, then I finished that and then I wanted to edit this video or the footage that I recorded from the farm and I started on that then I realized, oh wait, it's like 9.30 or 10 o'clock, I think it's now 10.30 already and I still wanted to record the Q&A so now I'm doing this and basically what I, what I wanted to say through all of that was just that somehow I didn't have time to do anything I wanted to do today but I did get stuff done that I wanted to get done <laughs> you be quiet bottle you have no part in this <laughs> anyway so I don't know what that little mini babble was about because that was really babbling I hope you guys enjoyed it I I can't even remember what I started saying. It's gone now. It's done. We had a great time on the farm though. Cool farm video coming up soon. Really cool. It's going to be like an Auron versus Nero video. Auron and Nero, two of the cutest entities in this world. Combating for the king of cuteness in one video. In the same video. Anyway, I've got a glass of water. It's got like lemons and oranges on it. It's beautiful. So 70s. We can call this the 70s glass. Anyway, now I'm going to get to the questions. Firstly, from Left of Today, do you live stream at all? If not, now that you have a webcam, it's your calling. You are very entertaining. Firstly, thank you very much. I'm not sure that's a fact, but I appreciate you saying it. I don't live stream. There's a lot of people that ask me about live streaming. I'm going to put this here. Uh, but the sad truth of the matter is that I can probably live stream right now, but the sad truth is that it's going to look so terrible that you won't even recognize the game I'm playing. You might, actually you might recognize it from the sounds you hear, because sound wise, I can stream okay. 
I actually used to stream StarCraft 2 uh, commentary to local players only, uh, audio only. Not only local actually, I think some international guys, I don't know if any of you remember it, but it was about a year and a half or two years ago when I first started out. That's how I did the commentary because that's all I could stream, audio only. And it was okay. It's good practice for commentating because you have to be really descriptive. And that's great. That's a good quality to have if you can describe what's going on. Make people visualize it. Anyway, so uh, the problem is our upload speed is so slow that we can't successfully stream smoothly in enough quality to be able to actually appreciate or enjoy. Uh, I'd say if you had to switch your YouTube videos down to 240p and then half that quality, that's what my streaming would look like. And I'm not even joking. I'm, I'm really not joking. It's not a, I'm not saying that as an exaggeration. I mean you can literally do that. Take it, half the quality, you can do that by putting it in a program like Sony Vegas and rendering it half the bitrate, then you'll get what my, my streaming would look like. Uh, if I had to get a line that's about four times the speed what I've got now, then I'd be able to stream. And the sad thing is, it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. So for now I'll stick with videos and what I do want to do, and I keep saying this in every video, is I want to organize something like Jesse Cox does Fan Fridays, which is pretty much the same kind of thing, except I won't be able to stream anything. Um, and I don't like calling people fans. I think calling someone a fan is just silly. I would call you viewers or subscribers any day, but not fans. Some of you I'd call friends. Straight up. But, uh, and the others, probably too, if I had to get to know you. Or just meet you, or whatever. Anyway, regardless of all that, I'm working on some things to get around the lack of streaming. I do think I'd be able to stream quite successfully and have a lot of fun doing it. But current situations just don't allow for it. Uh, there was one more thing though about the streaming. Right, I wanted to just put it out there. What are internet costs compared to the speed? Now if I had to do a quick calculation, because I get this question a lot. I get a ton of private messages about this. Why don't you stream? Uh, what kind of internet do you have? Why do you keep saying your uploads are slow? So the problem in South Africa is that bandwidth is like gold here and people charge way too much for it. So for our internet we pay around I'd say 700 rand a month. 700 rand. Uh, that is the equivalent of about hundred and ten dollar US dollars. Hundred and ten? Hundred and yeah, around 100 to 110 US dollars, and that would be, am I right in saying that? No, it's probably less. No, that's perfectly right. That's, that's right. 100 to 110 US dollars, and that's for a line that is 4 meg download and half a meg upload speed. There you go. So... You guys can feel free to post comparisons down below. Just that's that's what we pay right now. That is the the average cost of internet. We've actually got the cheapest service provider. That includes a uncapped service that is not completely uncapped because they throttle you after 14 days if you have excessive usage, which we have every single month because I uh, upload so much and they see it as excessive. So the internet situation in this country has a long way to go. Apparently they've got fiber lines which are really fast in the big cities now, but I think they're only for businesses at the moment. Who knows? Maybe in a couple of years. And I can't believe I'm still on the first question. I'm going to speed things up now, I promise. Then another one, this, another one from Divined. Also, will you start streaming your answer? See the previous question. Um, Dear Lumen, what was the hardest boss you've ever experienced in a video game? How long did it take you to beat? Also, did you in, do you enjoy difficult boss fights? This is from Australia on the internet. Brilliant question, and I've got a quick answer for you there. Golem Sisters? Chrono Trigger? Are they called the Golem Sisters? They are quite possibly the most irritating bosses I've ever encountered. Ever. They're terrible. I have not been able to beat them yet. That is how difficult they are, and I love Chrono Trigger. I'm going to switch Wi-Fi off now because it's draining my battery like crazy. Uh, iPhones, man. Please, Apple. Need to work on these batteries. 
Uh, I just don't want the phone to die and then I lose all my questions. But, Golem Sisters or something, close, close to the end of the game, it feels like the kind of boss that you won't be able to beat without exploiting or going back and grinding for some serious hours or getting like a ton of resistance gear or something like that. But that said, I do enjoy difficult boss fights if they're not over the top difficult, if you don't have to cheat or exploit to get past them. I feel as if this one may be on the verge of that. Except, perhaps, maybe I'm doing, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Okay, maybe I'm actually doing something wrong. I don't know, it's my first Chrono Trigger playthrough and I'm playing very casually. So I didn't really grind a lot, I didn't spend much time where I didn't have to spend and overall the game has been a lot of fun till this point I have become a little bit frustrated by it because honestly the boss just feels way too difficult. What happens is it's a turn based uh, RPG so within two turns you are so far on your back foot that you have to only heal then on the third or fourth turn they kill you. It's difficult. It's really difficult. Those of you that have played Chrono Trigger will probably be able to relate here, but that's the most difficult one so far. And I do enjoy difficult boss fights. If I can handle them, eventually. On the launch of Guild War 2, what server region are you going to be playing on? And what is your time zone? Our time zone is GMT-2. I think. Same as Paris, probably. Except we don't have daylight savings time. Uh, GMT-2? Yes, GMT minus two. We are about nine hours off from the US East Coast. No, West Coast. Uh, West Coast. <laughs> I have to work it out. I've got Noddy Eat Silk Worms. That's what I have to say every time I try and figure it out. I don't know why. I don't know how I can't figure this out just instantly, but I, I just have to do that little calculation. I call that a calculation every single time I do it to make myself feel better. But, GMT minus two, am I, am I wrong in saying minus? Is it plus? <laughs> same as, same as most of Europe, basically. And we're gonna be playing on EU. The server we're on right now is Long Eyes Ledge, but we might change it for launch. We're not sure yet, because I was actually told by Helene that she will not play on a totally empty server. We're gonna see how it is in the beta weekend, the next beta weekend. I'll have much more information for you between the 22nd of July and the 28th of August. Stay tuned, or the 25th of August. Then, you forgot to comment on people's suggestions about what game you'd like to play with them, um, or what game you would like to play with me. Uh, what is the most amazing and touching gift you've ever received on Christmas? I didn't see that part, from the Sparrow's Journey. Sorry, I butchered that question so bad, but, uh, and my nose is itching, excuse me. So. The reason I didn't comment on what you guys and girls said about games was because I just wanted the stats. I could comment on it and say that there was a lot of, for some reason, a lot of people wanted to play Minecraft. <laughs> I don't know. It's difficult. We were actually working on getting the server up sometime, but uh, a lot of people said Dota. A lot of people wanted to play Team Fortress, and I see a sense a trend here. Valve games are pretty popular. Uh, the nice thing is we're going to be able to play Guild Wars a lot, but this ties in with what I said before with starting up a video thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to allocate a certain time slot, maybe every week, who knows, maybe we'll start it every second week and see how it goes first, to spend in time playing games with you guys. Maybe I'll record, say, one video of the evening, or one or two videos that evening, and then do the rest just to have fun, to play and have fun. That's sounds good to me. But what I did was I wrote it all down, I've got it on a notepad on my desktop, and I just wanted to see what th those of you that watch the Lumen Weekly Q&A think of the idea and what games you'd actually like to play. So I've got it on my desktop and I'm planning on doing something with it. Choosing a popular game that's easy, easily accessible and doesn't suffer from big latency issues because that's a big thing as well. FPS games, Team Fortress, probably not going to happen. Dota, on the other hand, possible. Well, very very likely, actually. Something like Dota. Something that doesn't rely on latency, so not an FPS game. Anyway, most touching gift I've ever received. I don't know if it was for Christmas, but a couple of years ago, uh, the first birthday or Christmas that I was with Helene, which was a couple of years ago, it was like four, five, six years ago, and uh, she gave me this little box. In it 
was like a bunch of stuff that she didn't go and buy, but she had either lying around or that reminded her of me or that she thought that I would really appreciate. And it, I can't remember exactly what was in it and little things that she made as well. And it was possibly the cutest thing that anyone's ever given to me. And I've still got the box in my room. I think it's next to my bed actually. And all this stuff is just around there. And it's, it was super cute. Okay, it was so, so nice of her. And she, cause she didn't like, she couldn't go out and buy me stuff or anything like that. So she made stuff. She collected a bunch of stuff that she felt really strongly about. She gave it to me. And honestly, I feel quite strongly about them too, in a good way. Strongly in a good way. So, that is probably the most touching gift I've ever received. Do you like Linkin Park's new album? This is from Anton Svensson. Anton Svensson, you have the most epic surname I've ever heard. <laughs> I have actually been called Swin Swenson before. I don't say Sven, I say Swin. It's a terrible Afrikaans habit, but that's an amazing surname just because it sounds so much like my name. There you go. New Linkin Park album. I really like Roads Untraveled and Powerless. Powerless because I watched the Abraham Lincoln trailer like a thousand times to hear the song and I just, I just feel, I don't know, I feel like it, it's good. <laughs> That's such a bad thing to, I don't, I'm not really being very expressive here, am I? No, I, I feel as if uh, that kind of song works really well with Chester Bennington's voice and when they make a song that has the focus uh, where the focal point of the song is their voice, where, where the voice is what's carrying the song forward and not the band, not the heavy guitar, not the drummer, because they have some songs there that are like, anyway, then I, I, those, are, those are the songs that I really appreciate and I like. Uh, and Roads Untraveled, I, I feel was incredibly, incredibly cool. Some people would say it's not even a proper song because it's, so sh it's like two minutes or two and a half minutes, no, two minutes long or something, but and it's, there's no real proper band playing. I think they've got some light instruments in the background, but it's mostly just their voices. But those two songs are really good. On the whole, I think that, I'll say what I said before, I think if you have all the Linkin Park CDs at hand, close by, then you combine them all, just put them all together, you'll have a really good collection of music. And I appreciate that about Linkin Park. What some bands do wrong is they release another album or CD or whatever with the exact same sound as their previous one. And that gets a bit boring. Sure, they'll have different lyrics, they'll have different song names, whatever, but the sound is exactly the same. Now, Linkin Park does something pretty different with every single CD that they release. I wouldn't say they, their sound is evolving, but it's definitely changing, and I appreciate that. So on the CD, there are a couple that I like. Um, I can't remember the names because I just don't listen to music anymore. I just don't have time. I wrote the CD, put it in the car, then Helene um, kind of... We actually used to be able to play the stuff from our iPods or iPho uh, well, iPhone, whatever. But now the vehicle that we have right now doesn't support that. So we have to actually write CDs to put it in there. Um, and then she went and wrote on it with a pen and made a big scratch on it. Somehow! And it was like a deep scratch. I don't know how she was strong arm in that, that pin against the CD, but it was a terrible idea. So I didn't get to listen to half the CD because it was skipping and stuff. Uh, but Roads Untraveled, Powerless, uh, and like two others, I think. But I literally have only listened to it once or twice. There you go. Big fan of Linkin Park though. Chester Bennington has the most amazing voice. If you haven't heard him sing in Adele's song, What's it called? How can I be forgetting what that super fa- uh, f Fire? No, I'm thinking of the other one now where she's lighting the rain on fire. <laughs> Setting fire to the rain. That's a terrible song. At least I don't like it. Um, what's her famous song? Adele's famous song? Uh, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. But he sings it and he sings it so, so well. Much better than she sings it. Google it. They sang it live once. Um, let's see. Have you read a series called Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan? It's a pretty long one, and I enjoyed it a lot. This is from Kelpie Sean, and her second part of her question is, have you ever heard of or seen an episode of Doctor Who? 
First one, Wheel of Time. I've got a friend who read the entire series and he said it was amazing. I just haven't had time. I've got so many books that I need to get through uh, that I just haven't really had the inclination to go out and look for another series to read. I'm reading the Game of Thrones book right now, as I mentioned, and it's called Sword of Storms, I think. And I am reading the Malazan Book of the Force Fallen. Book of the Fallen, I haven't read that in like a month, but I'm reading that book, which is called Dead Ass Gates. That's the second one in the series. I'm reading a book by R.A. Salvatore called The Bear. I am reading another one called The Stowaway by himself and his son. So I'm reading four books at the same time, and I'm just not getting through them. What can I say? I'm a flake when it comes to reading. So I have heard of it, I heard it's really, really good, but I just haven't had the time to get into it. Then, I have seen Doctor Who in passing. I have been told that I sometimes sound like him, but I think that's just people who kind of think I have a British accent where I don't. Um, I do like some of the actors that are in the Doctor Who series. I know that they use different actors for every couple of seasons or something like that, and I like that idea. I like that the series has gone on for as long as it has, and they managed to keep it fresh by changing the actor up the whole time. I like the idea of Doctor Who, I like the whole, is it called the TARDIS? The whole time travel thing, fascinating. Absolutely fascinating, and I would like to watch it someday. I'm not going to say anything like I'm going to watch it as soon as I can, because I've got so much other stuff to watch as it is, but I'd like to get into it someday as well. It looks like fun. It really does. Then, hey, it's victory music. I like it. Can you even hear the music? I don't know. I just don't know. Uh, that was from Kelpie Sean, as I mentioned. Then, if you do Asheron's Call as your next retro game, that would make my year. This is from Firestorm123. And Asheron's Call is an MMO, if I'm not mistaken. Or is it? And Asheron's Call 2 is out. So I'm not sure why I would play Asheron's Call 1. I suppose because it's a retro game. But the chances are if I play a retro game, I'm going to go back further than that. And the chances are also good that I'll play something slightly more... Excuse me. <sighs> I should be... Oh. That's bad habit. You're only not sneezing into your hand. You should do it into your, into your elbow instead. That you don't go and shake someone's hand. Anyway. Uh, as I was saying... The chances are I'll do something else. I've got so many requests for Chrono Trigger for some reason, but the game is pretty long. And the sad thing is it's not a very entertaining game to watch. So I'm going to think long and hard if I ever start a retro game playthrough, but the chances are I'll choose something a little bit more exciting and something that doesn't rely on other players to make it good. If if I've got Asheron's Call right, I'm not sure. I think Asheron's Call is an old MMO. But next. I should get through these a little bit faster because there are so many questions here. With your comments on next-gen consoles in the last week's Q&A, what are your thoughts on Nintendo's Wii U? And have you thought about doing a Darksiders 1 or 2 playthrough? Now, the Wii U is very interesting. If I had unlimited money, which I don't, and I probably won't ever, I would buy myself a Wii U. If it was really cheap, I'd buy it. If I got it on special somewhere, I'd buy it. Uh, whatever for really really cheap obviously, but I love the idea of The controller with the screen on it. There's so much cool stuff that they can do with that so much cool stuff And there are a few games that I'm really really interested in uh, Was it called fatal frame or project X or something like that uh, that thing uh, you know, we, you, now, now if, if they if they trans, transfer that game from its original in, onto the Wii U, and you can use this, now picture using this controller, holding it up, and that you can do this already. I think they can already do this with other stuff as well. Like, I can do it on my phone, actually. They've got, I've got apps and stuff like that. But you can hold this controller, which has an LCD screen on it, up, and what you're seeing in here is different from what you're seeing around it, okay? And no one else can see that unless they're looking on your screen. Now, if you can have a game that, where you hold on the sides or whatever, wherever you hold on it, I didn't actually look at the controller very closely, but, and you either like, you have to take photos, or you have to use it to try and see where things are. Maybe it shouldn't be a too fast paced game because if things get too frantic when you're busy using that controller and you like fling it and it goes flying across the room, that would be bad. 
John saw you could probably tie it to your wrist or something, but still, that would be bad. Um, but there's a lot of, with the Wii U specifically, there's a lot of um, interesting stuff they can do with it. I am actually a big fan of, of games like that where you have to either, where you have to do something different, basically. I like the whole photography aspect of Beyond Good and Evil, for instance, and it, it appealed to me. It was fun. It's something different, something fun, uh, something, uh, I didn't mean to say fun twice, something um, out there, something out of the box, something that people don't try very often, and uh, that kind of thing they should really do more often. But the thing is that currently with the Wii U, as it stands right now, it looks like they're not thinking um, as out of the box as they should. They should really be experimenting with more things. Now, I like the controller for things like using it as a map. Say you're playing Skyrim, you can always have your map open on your controller while you're busy playing on the big screen, or you can have your inventory open, or you can use it as your little management panel. Same goes for a ton of other games. Uh, I think that kind of thing is cool. But then another thing actually I wanted to say about the Wii U, because you say here about next-gen consoles, I don't see Wii U as next-gen. Maybe if we are currently... <sighs> Sorry, it's late. If we are currently on let's say the third generation of consoles, which I don't know if, it's, if that's entirely accurate, then that would be 3.5 and not 4, because I don't think the hardware is really that special in it. Um, the innovation factor isn't that much, let's say, further out than we've had in the past little while. I mean, the motion controller or the, the, the controller that they got there is interesting, but it's nothing super, super new. So, I don't know, I wouldn't really consider it I personally wouldn't consider it a next-gen console, but I do like the idea of it, and I think it's going to be um, a nice, slightly more hardcore, casual console, if that makes sense. If that makes sense to you. Now, it's going to be something that people, maybe they weren't entirely convinced by buying a Wii, um, because maybe the games didn't look good enough, maybe they weren't a, as big a selection as they'd like of games to play on it. Uh, anything like that, but maybe it'll get a different crowd. It'll get slightly more hardcore people, people that were between the two of them, perhaps. I don't know. I would personally love something like a Wii U, but I wouldn't go out and buy it on day one. That's for sure. Now, that was a bad answer. I'm just thinking now back at that answer, trying to review it. I babbled and that was a bad answer. But that's my opinion on the Wii U. Not that it's bad. That question was from Setveen. Darksiders 1 and 2, that was the second part of the question. Uh, unlikely, because the chances are I'll probably play something else. Uh, there are so many big, cool, new games coming out. So many amazingly good-looking indie games coming out. There are just so many things to play right now that I probably won't go back and play something that's just off new, like that was released a couple of months ago. It's not a retro game, it's not a new game. It's not super popular. I do like the series, the Darksiders series. I think I played the first one for about an hour or two on uh, my friend's console, and it's cool. It's fun, but, uh, you know, meh. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. Then, as Lumen the Adventurer, why don't you have any Let's Plays of games from the adventure genre? For example, Monkey Island Special Edition. Mr. Retired Punk asked this. Good question. And I'm not even sure. Honestly, I just don't know. I would say the closest thing that I've done to adventure would probably be gone Beyond Good and Evil. And I don't know, I, I don't, maybe they just don't make good Let's Plays. Be Monkey, Monkey Island specifically, the special edition, I love what they've done there. Now if you didn't know, Monkey Island's an incredibly old point and click adventure game, but the special edition, they remastered it, so they did everything they redid everything, they did it all again, made it pretty, and they added this feature that you could play it through with these nice brand new graphics, and at any point in the game you could press a button, I think it was one of the F keys or something, and it would switch back to the old graphics seamlessly. Seamlessly. The old UI, the old graphics, the old interface, everything. Even in the middle of the cutscene, you could do it any time at the menu, doesn't matter. And I love that. I love that you can switch between them, see how the characters look, see how the scenes look different. Um, just compare the two. That's amazing. I would be doing that constantly. It would probably get irritating. I'd do it so much, 
that people watching would get irritated just because I'm so fascinated by it and that they'd have these two games running side by side the whole way through and you can just swap between them. I like it. I really do like it and as for playing more of them I probably will. That type of thing I'll probably play more. I don't know when or what but I've got a lot of stuff that I need to finish right now first. A couple of playthroughs, Grimrock, Mass Effect, uh, it's actually only those two. Skyrim, I would like to finish it sometime. I was actually considering pondering finishing Skyrim on its one year anniversary, which is, what is it, sometime in October? I can't remember when Skyrim released. I, it's been so, so long. But I will probably finish it sometime in the not too distant future. Mainly because as fun as Skyrim is, the chances are something else will come out that'll be even more fun or will be able to uh, I will be able to make as fun pl by playing it or whatever people will enjoy the same amount so I'll probably be mixing it up soon well not soon I'll probably be mixing it up playing more adventure games stuff like that when I've got more space in the roster of games that I currently have that's what I wanted to say um, this is now from Killistic one is in Diablo 3 ever thought about leveling other characters Mm, I'm more a one character per person guy, but I have thought about living a hardcore character sometime. I'm not sure when, maybe when we finished the Hell playthrough. The Hell playthrough is taking a long time right now because of Helene being busy and stuff, but probably, probably gonna level a hardcore character sometime, just for fun. I don't care if I die, it's just a game, I'll just level another one then. I hope that they add some sort of hardcore PvP in the future because that's what I'm keen for, but that's probably the only the only reason I'd have to make another character. As for class, I have no idea. Nothing. What is Eileen's favorite beverage? Is it hot or cold, tea or coffee, iced tea or juice from WowNo666 or just WowNo? She told me before to tell you it was a peanut butter banana smoothie. That's her favorite cold drink and that's like peanut butter that you put in the freezer, you blend it up, then it's like sort of like ice cream mush. Then you put that banana with peanut butter in the blending thing, and you, we use a hand blender because we don't have a, a little normal blender. Then you blend it like this, and you put some milk with it, and that's it. That's your smoothie. You can put some other stuff in there if you want, some vanilla essence, some cinnamon, whatever. But that's, that's what she likes. And I must say that it is really, really good. For hot... Uh, that's her favorite for hot stuff. She also likes coffee with cinnamon in or cappuccino with cinnamon in. There you go. Then, Wano also says, discussion, time travel, myth or possibility, pros and cons. Now that's interesting. That is extremely interesting, time travel. <laughs> that is a very broad question, or it wasn't even a question, it was a discussion. Now, myth or possibility, Honestly, probably not possible yet, because, because, if it was possible, we'd have people traveling from the future to here. We'd see it happening. We'd know it was happening. That's my theory, okay? That is my theory, because no one ever listens when they say, don't change anything when you go back. You could alter the fabric of the time-space continuum. No one listens to that. They would be interfering all the time. So, I thereby declare that time travel is not yet possible, but it will be possible in the future. We just haven't been to the future yet. That's it. We are the first time right now. I'll coin that. We are the first time. <laughs> I know it should probably be timeline, but saying we are the first time, it sounds more epic. But, um, no, I, I do think that something like that should be possible, theoretically. If you think, <laughs> if you think about it long and hard. So, um, where was it? There you go. Pros and cons. Pros, you could solve a lot of problems. Cons, you could cause even more problems. Done. <laughs> That's it. I don't feel too strongly about time travel. I really like the idea. And it makes for good movies, good sci-fi movies. But it's not something that I spend many waking hours thinking about except when I'm watching these really complicated movies where there's time travel involved and where it just makes things much more complicated anyway 
that's my thoughts on time travel. Um, it hasn't happened yet, because we would have known. Now, just think if you had the chance to make your own game. What type would it be and how would you call it? And other details. Also from Wow No, Wow, this guy, Wow No, you're asking some seriously sick questions. Good stuff. They are complicating your questions. They are always begging to be answered with real meat, with good answers. And I'm trying, I'm trying. So, if I had to make my own game, I would like a game, I'm going to answer this with very broad strokes. I would like to make a game that allows the player, why am I, why am I so low in my camera? There you go. I'm slouching. I'm slouching and that's bad. I'd make a game where the player would be very free to do what he wants to do, but there must be, it must be like a sandbox. So it would be a sandbox type game, but at the same time, you must have a lot of choice and a lot of freedom. That's about all I can think of right now. I mean, as, for, as far as story goes, I feel that the most important aspect would not be story. It would be gameplay. It would be um, immersion. It would be gripping the player. So, that said, I would say that the gameplay needs to be important. Uh, it needs to be the most important factor of the game. And it would have to be... I wouldn't be able to tell you if I'd want an RPG or like an, an FPS type thing, it could be a FPS RPG, or first person RPG, whatever. Um, it would have to have some sort of progression system, but it would have to be, not have to be, I would like something that will reward players for spending time on it, but at the same time, not to an imbalanced point, and it needs to be a game that will last. So these are very broad stro strokes. Uh, sandbox, freedom, lots of choices, and in that, lots of options. I, choices and options I see as two different things. Um, the ability to be able to mess around a lot with many different things. So say for instance, you were going to make a Fallout MMO. Okay. And you could create the entire planet Earth as a post, in, in a post-apocalyptic setting. Then imagine how cool it would be if you could go anywhere and do anything. Now this is huge in scope, but if you could have the entire Earth, North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Russia, the Southeast Asian regions, everything, okay? Everything. The North and South Poles, whatever. Uh, if you could have all of that in your world, just imagine. If you could set out, go anywhere you wanted to. Now the scale of this would be way too big to be able to do, but it would be nice. Just imagine doing it. Imagine. Wow. <laughs> now, all of this, I would want to do with retro style graphics. Pokemon style. Straight up, boom. That's what I want. I like Pokemon style graphics, but then imagine you running around with Pokemon style graphics, maybe a little bit further zoomed out, you can open your inventory up, stuff like that. Um, I'm just talking randomly about, it, it's like I'm getting these ideas popping into my head, popping out, popping in, popping out, and this one's now gripped me. Uh, Pokemon style, but you can go anywhere in a huge area, say the size of the earth, and then you can do anything. You can, if you want to do glorious battle, and you can do that. You can, uh, progress through the game or do what you want to do um, in the sense that you can do battle, you can stay at home and craft, you can open up your own shop, you can buy your own house, you can make a hotel, you can buy an airplane and travel. I, I, I don't even really know how to explain it, but I want a game that will give me the freedom that I need to thrive and enjoy it. So that's the kind of game I'd try and make. I'd try and make a game where you give the player enough freedom to be able to have the time of his life. Freedom, choice. Um, if you're going for a different route, a different avenue, then you'd say that you could have an amazing, amazingly epic story in there, but that's secondary to me. So, the chance thought would be something like an MMO. I honestly also like the idea of something where you can play single player and you can play with friends, but it doesn't need to be an MMO. So imagine like a Pokemon online, but you strip away the Pokemon aspect of it, and 
you've got the graphics system. I've got a thing for retro graphics. Uh, I just, I love them. I just think it looks much better than the graphics of today's games, and it really symbolizes what gaming should be. I feel. People shouldn't care too much about the graphics, they should care about the amazing gameplay. And I say amazing because if I had to make a game, it would have amazing gameplay. Anyway, I'm babbling now, and I'm going to move on to the next question. I hope I answered at least a bit of that. This is going to end up being way too long, with way too few answers in. Now, do you have any questions towards your audience? Wow, no, 666 again. That's amazing. The one question I feel you should always be asking someone is, how are you? Or how has your day been? Or what's happening in your life? Those are good questions. The first one more so than the others. If you want to get a bit more deep, then you'd ask, are you happy? If not, why not? Those are good questions. So I'll ask you those things. Um, probably the first one, how are you? That's the best question I feel that you could ever ask someone, no matter how long you've known them, no matter how good a friend this person is, you can always ask someone that. Then, hey, you're not the guy to ask this question, but I'm desperate. Now the thing is, I'm feeling that me and my girlfriend are in the path of splitting up. How should one prepare for this kind of thing? This is from wow no 666 and I can answer this pretty simply. If you are splitting up, you should analyze the situation. If you feel you're busy splitting up, by the time I, I, you actually get to see this, the chances are it's happened. But I'll just answer this um, in the hopes that nothing has happened, which is pretty unlikely, but I'll do it anyway. So what I'll say is that you should ask yourself, do you want to be with your girlfriend? Are you two meant to be together? Were you happy with her? What actually went wrong? Did you have a silly fight? And then you decided that things are just spiraling out of control? Do you want to be her boyfriend? If the answer to that is yes, then you should not even be asking this question. Then you should be trying to win her back. Or you should be asking her, what's the matter? You should be talking it out with her. So, uh, that's, that's what I'll say. Okay. Don't prepare for the worst. Rather, figure out if it's really meant to happen, if it's actually going to happen. If you don't want to be her boyfriend anymore, then you shouldn't need to prepare. It should be easy. It should just be done. So that's that. Dr. Falumen has spoken. <laughs> what do you think of the recently free-to-play versus MM uh, free to play MMOs versus ones in which you need to pay and how do you think the gaming industry is changing with all of these new free to play games as long as it's free everyone's gonna like it true this is from Mo Sharif no no people do really absolutely terrible free to play models sometimes I feel that free to play is the future okay I feel that subscription based games are slowly but surely gonna die out and I feel that people will be able to find interesting and fun non-abusive ways to set up the free-to-play model uh, and that said we're gonna see a lot more of it in the future I like free-to-play games I feel that um, free-to-play MMOs specifically have a lot to offer uh, but it's gonna get more as time goes by right now the pay-to-play games are they, they really are better at the moment. Guild Wars 2 is gonna, I think, sort of break the cycle a little bit. There have been a few really good free-to-play MMOs so far, but honestly, World of Warcraft just offers so much that it's so difficult to just ignore it. Still though, I do like free-to-play and I do, I do think it's, it's here to, to stay. So, um, get used to it. That's what I'll say. Did I answer the entire question? Um, the gaming industry is changing, I feel that people are just, it's changing for the better. I feel that people are going to adapt to it, find ways of doing this, because people are always going to want to spend money on gaming, because it's become somewhat of, an habit, of a habit, and um, say for instance in Guild Wars, you're not going to be paying monthly, so people have that extra money every month, they're probably going to spend on buying gems, and cosmetic goodies, and other stuff like that, so... Um, They'll always find ways to get the pay players, the ones that want to, to pay for something. 
So don't worry about that. <laughs> then, Josh Suwao, Josh Yao. I don't know how to say that. Now that you have a webcam, will you consider showing face cams in your Let's Plays? Yes. <laughs> There's a leaf blowing in here. How did that even get in here? Oh, now it's under the car. Never mind. <laughs> There's a breeze coming through because Nero's little door hole is, um, is open and somehow a leaf came in. It's obviously a brave adventurer leaf. He's welcome in this office. Totally welcome. Hey Lumina, I was wondering what your advice would be about trying to get someone into video games that really isn't that much into them. This is from the BZ33. Start small, take it slow. Maybe let them watch you play something. But always obviously choose something that you think would be up their alley. Don't show a girl that you li think would like some something like Doom 3 or some gory game like that. Or Amnesia. Oh well, Amnesia, honestly, I feel is a very good game to start someone on. Really good, actually. Because a lot of girls, for instance, I'm gonna just go ahead and assume that you're asking this because you want to get a girlfriend into gaming, because that's usually the question that one gets. But a lot of girls like being afraid. They like horror movies. Now you tell her, well, this is like a horror movie, except you are in it. So you turn all the lights off. You have a nice big screen. That's important. That's very important. You turn the sound a little bit up, not too much. Don't wake your parents. If you still live with your parents. If not, don't wake your neighbors. You set the mood, basically. Maybe a candle or two. Sit down in a comfy seat in front of your computer. Even better if it's a console and you can play something scary on there. Um, and then see how that goes. Maybe you play. Have your friend join you. This can actually work for a male friend as well. If it's, if it's just a friend of yours that doesn't like gaming, say a school friend or something, um, you can do the same thing. Maybe try a different game. Honestly, what I think friends... If I had to say right now, any of my friends that I know if, that didn't like gaming, then, then I'd introduce them to something like... You know what? Something like DayZ, or something like Team Fortress, or something like Dota, or something that's... Got a, a nice community, I suppose Daisy's community is pretty much non-existent. There are a lot of players playing it, but you can't really communicate in-game. But I feel that Daisy's the kind of thing you can really have a lot of fun with, with a friend in the same room. Running around that big island with all those zombies. Pfft, scary stuff. You can do it with someone. Anyway, my the point of the matter is, start slow and try find some common ground. If you've got a friend that likes horror movies, try Amnesia. If you've got a friend that likes fashion. Try The Sims. And I really do mean it. Sims is not a terrible game. It's actually quite okay. And uh, start slow and just try and get them into it. Maybe watch some commentated stuff. You can watch my videos. Or rather than watch my videos, rather if it's a male friend, watch some Total Biscuit Starcraft commentary. Because sometimes commentary, if it's done in such a way that people can understand, can really get someone into a game. Can get them interested. Because... Often people will sit down and watch sport. Even if they don't know the sport that well, they'll see something interesting. Something will catch their eye. And they'll be like, well, I'd like to see the end of this. Same thing can happen with PC, with, uh, with PC or console or with any sort of game. Any gaming-related stuff. So start slow and uh, see where it takes you. Then, let's see. What Guild Wars server does Guild Illuminati play on US or EU? I've actually answered this, so I'm not going to answer it again. Um, oh, and something else. You should consider putting a fish head on your blue wall in your background. It would look nice. Are your viewers called Luminians? By the way, Amnesia Machine for Pigs does not suit you at all. Note the caps. It's um, so not you. One last question. What's your favorite meal? This is from Bluefish, and now I see why you said you should put a fish on your blue wall. <laughs> good, good. I'll think of that. I'll think about that. Um, are your viewers called Dominions? Perhaps, if they want to be. You can, you can call yourself that if you want to. <laughs> I don't mind. And Mesia Machine for Pigs, I might play it. Okay, I will see what I'm doing at the time. I can't remember when it actually comes out. I don't recall. But I'm considering doing a playthrough of it. I'm just not sure yet. We'll see. 
We'll see closer to the time. My favorite meal, sushi. Straight up. No contest. Next. This is from For You Winston or Claire Bear. Nice name. You mentioned the trading card game Magic the Gathering in one of your recent videos. Do you play or have you ever played previously? Yes, I did play previously. I don't play right now. I am interested in the one that's on Steam. I haven't bought it yet. I don't own it. But I do like the game. I think it's pretty cool. I like how creative you can be. And I did enjoy collecting the cards when I was slightly younger. Uh, I still have a collection of cards that I haven't touched in a long, long time. I used to play mostly green and blue decks and the most recent one I can remember was an upheaval deck. I don't know if any of you know that card, but um, that's the one I used to play and it was based around getting all the cards out of play and then getting them back in really quickly because you have very cheap creatures and stuff. Anyway, it's unimportant. Um, I did play uh, quite a bit of magic. I collected some cards, n not a lot. Sorry, now I'm hiccuping from this this water. I don't know why, but uh, I haven't recently played it, sadly. I see Helene has a couple of tattoos. I'm a big fan of them myself. What are they, and do you, Lumen, have or want to get any yourself? Mm, myself, not so much. It all depends. I wouldn't go out to get a tattoo just to get a tattoo. I would get one if I really felt strongly about it. As for Helene, she has a star on her one arm, on her shoulder. She has a skeleton on the inside of her arm. She has like a pin-up girl on the other side. And that's it. That's all she's got. Those three. They are beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Then from Mr. Carlos, do you have any future plans for Path of Exile? Yes. That's all I'm going to say. I am going to do stuff with Path of Exile soon. And... You will hear all about it. Then, from Jansbo or our Arya Stark from the Guild Wars 2 beta. What is the story behind Nero's name? I also have a dog. He's named Turbo. And if Nero is Finnish, and uh, if Nero, oh, in Finnish, the word means genius or brainiac. What a wonderful name for a dog! Um, I have to say, that's brilliant. Nero actually also means. Something else. Oh, it means black, I think. But Helene, Helene actually knows the other meaning of the word. Nero is actually named after one of the characters in Devil May Cry 4. We played the game, we liked the name, we chose that name for our puppy. And we thought it suited him. I don't know, he looked like a Nero when we got him. So there wasn't really a big story or fuss behind the name, but that's, that's why it's called Nero. And... That's about it. Turbo is also a very cute name for a dog, especially if he runs really fast. Then, from Daya Armani, in one of your videos you said you were born in South Africa and that you've been living there for your entire life, so I think it's safe to assume you speak Afrikaans. However, in your Diablo 3 Midnight launch video, you were interviewing some people in English and they responded in English as well. Now, I was wondering uh, which one of these is the language you speak most, English or Afrikaans, or do you speak um, in English to some people, in Afrikaans to others. That's a good question. And I speak almost entirely English now. I don't really touch Afrikaans much anymore. I used to speak Afrikaans all the time to Helene, 100% of the time. But she switched over to English recently because it's more widely spoken. It is a more international language than Afrikaans. So it made more sense. Also, we want to have our child one day speak in English, not Afrikaans. So... That was, again, it made sense. Um, as for the people at the midnight launch, I just chose to speak English to them and they replied in English back. Most people in South Africa are at least bilingual, if not trilingual, and, um, well, mostly bilingual. And they can generally just switch at will. Now, I think some of them in the midnight launch video were actually Afrikaans and I just bullied them into speaking English. So, uh, it's safe to assume you speak Afrikaans, yes. I also did all my schooling in Afrikaans till standard 5, till grade 7. Grade 8, I switched over to English, I think. 
if I'm not mistaken. And I can't remember, it was a long time ago. And that's pretty much where it started ending. I stopped speaking Afrikaans then. I still speak Afrikaans to our tenant who lives upstairs here. A good friend of mine, I speak Afrikaans to him. Then, if you speak Afrikaans indeed, since I'm Dutch and the South African language is very similar to Dutch, I'd love to hear you say something in Afrikaans. Would you be so kind as to do so? For example, read this question in Afrikaans or something. By voorbeeld, lees hierdie vraag in Afrikaans of iets. Um, ek kan nogals makkelijk Afrikaans praat, maar ek doen dit net nie baie nie, want ek hou net hier erg so baie funny. En, I have a terrible, terrible, terrible accent. Like, uh, as ek so Afrikaans praat met jou, dan sal enige rechte Afrikaanse mens, what I said there was, if, if I speak like that to you, any real Afrikaans person would say, wow, that's, that's a Soti, that's an Englishman trying to speak Afrikaans. And um, I've, got a I've got an accent like that now because I just haven't spoken it for so long and I just stopped entirely. So if any of you Dutch people can understand that, I'm not going to put subtitles in or anything. I didn't say anything super important. Um, if you can understand that, that's great. I can understand almost everything that Dutch people say. If they don't speak too fast, I can understand all of it just because of Afrikaans. So it's interesting. It's fun. There you go. I hope that's enough. It's bad though. Just saying, that's not how all Afrikaans people sound. Hardly any, actually. Then, next question. Uh, Dai Armani actually asked about the Guild Wars 2 Guild. And I'll just refer you to the previous uploads that I've got up. Guild Wars 2 news episodes. Um, I did speak about it there. And I'll have another video up about it soon. Yes, you can join. Everyone can join. <laughs> I, I hope. Then, from Odyssey. Planet Side 2 looks epic. Do you think you'll be able to play it from SA, maybe South African servers? Uh, it would suck if it's not on big scale though. It does look epic. I am planning on playing it someday, hopefully, perhaps, I'll give it a try. I do think that they might get South African servers up, but I don't think very many people would play there, sadly. Who knows, maybe the netcode is so good that it works well from here to say a European server. That would be amazing, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Then, uh, do you think we'll see Asura or Silvari in the next beta weekend? I think that has been answered. <laughs> um, do you think that the Silvari Traveller, Amonrath, with her Fernhound, will be like Nicholas the Traveller and Professor Yakinton? I will say that I don't know about the first part that you said there. I do know Nicholas the Traveller is and Professor Yakinton. Um, I don't know who Amonrath is, actually. I'm assuming it's a traveler that sells player stuff or you can trade stuff to it or something like that. That would be cool, but honestly I don't think <coughs> I don't think that they would do that in Guild Wars 2. Mainly because I think you can do most of the stuff, most of the trading, most of the exchanging through the UI and they kind of want it to be easy because that's their business model. They need you to use their shop, they need you to pay for stuff. Now I know it's not the same, but um, we'll have to wait and see. I honestly don't know who Amonrath is, the Silvari Traveller. I have seen the Fernhounds before though. Hmm. There are a couple of them in Lion's Arch, so I'm not sure. But I do know that Nicholas the Traveller is a guy that pops around the world in Guild Wars 1 and you trade stuff to him or something like that. That's pretty much all I know about it, so anything I could be saying right now could be false. If it is, Feel free to correct me. Then, did you have fun finally corrupting Mr. Thorn? Yes, I did. If you don't know about that, go back a couple of videos to our Guild Luminati versus the Corruption videos. Have a look at them. Absolutely amazing. Ton of fun. I can't believe we finally got him. Then, Matilduska. Did I say that right now? We actually uh, spoke about this um, recently, and that's the only other way I can think of saying your name. Saying the C like a C, Duska, or Dushka, that's, that's all I can think of. Anyway, what's your, favorite, what's your favorite and least favorite race in Guild Wars 2? Tough, I'd, have, I'd actually have to play Silvari and Asura to actually say if I like them or not, but I'd say my least favorite's probably Norn. Not a big fan. I don't know why, favorite at the moment, because I haven't played Asura and Silvari, definitely human. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'd probably like the Asura the most though. 
when I've played them, they'll probably be my favorite. And that's it. Finally at the end of the questions. I hope at least some of you managed to watch all the way till the end. My camera is running out of space as I say these words, so the timing was good. Check back here soon for more. If you have any questions, send them to talesoflumen at gmail.com or leave them in the comment section below this video. Anything works. Just get them to me somehow. I uh, apologize for this being late and for being as long as it is, but and for me as tired as I am, because I am super tired. I have been making a lot of mistakes, saying a lot of silly things, and uh, I apologize for that. But check back as soon as more. Most important here. Happy sending those questions in. Again and again and again. Happy that.